way in the back. It seems to me that the first <coughs> six arguments, they don't really argue the existence of God now, they argue the existence of a creationist. That's how he created the world and all these things. Yeah. But it doesn't really prove that God exists now. And it doesn't make faith in God now reasonable either. That's a good question. Uh, I don't think that's true of this first argument. This is called the argument from contingency. It drives you back to a metaphysically necessary being which is the explanation for why there is any contingent reality at all. A necessary being is a being whose non-existence is impossible. A contingent being is a being that exists but doesn't have to exist. Its non-existence is possible. Now, if you arrive at a metaphysically necessary being, then clearly it cannot have ceased to exist. In that case, it would, it would be contingent, not necessary. So this argument gets you to a metaphysically necessary being, which must exist now. Now, with respect to the second argument, you're quite right that there's nothing in this argument that says that this creator, <coughs> of, personal creator of the universe is still around today. But think about it for a moment. This is a being which transcends space and time, which created all matter and energy and the laws of nature that govern it. What could possibly make it cease to exist? It, it has power over the entire universe, over space and time themselves, matter and energy. So the idea that this creator is still around, I would say, is a pretty safe bet. Uh, I, I certainly wouldn't bet that he has expired in the meantime. And then, of course, when you couple this with all the other arguments, you get a cumulative case, as I say, for uh, the existence of God now. Yes, so, I was just going back to the Higgs boson. Suppose that that collision was actually a universe of itself. And if we made that happen, that doesn't mean that we have control of what happens after the creation of that universe. If you suppose that the actual collision made a universe. Yes, now, if I understand your question correctly, you're imagining a finite being which manipulates matter and energy and the laws of nature so as to bring about a collision in, in a mini universe or something. But that's not what this argument drives you back to. This drives you back to a being which has created space-time. The borguth vilenkin theorem implies that there is a past boundary to space-time. All matter and energy come into existence at that point, as well as space and time. So this cause is utterly transcendent. It's not like your manipulator who makes these little bangs and could expire. So I, as I say, I certainly wouldn't bet on this thing having passed away. It, it seems to me something that powerful, that transcendent in creating the universe will, will still be around.